Hi, I'm Matt Dickin, and this is Strategic Wealth. Here's what's coming up on today's show. When you never lose money, Mark, it's a lot easier to get ahead and stay ahead. All right, this week I want to share with you four different tips. This week I wanted to profile my new book, Retirement Planning in a New Direction, A Return to Common Sense. That's just a little bit of what you're going to see right now. Welcome to this week's show. Thank you once again for tuning in. As usual, we have a lot of great information that we're going to be bringing to you. We've got an X's and O's segment that you want to make sure you get a pad and paper to take notes with because I'm going to share with you some things that you need to know. We've got a Facebook poll question. I'm going to be answering questions that you've submitted about my new book. And of course, we're going to take a look at a previous radio show that we've covered in the past. So why don't we get started with this week's Money Minute. All right, this week I wanted to profile my new book, Retirement Planning in a New Direction, A Return to Common Sense. I'm excited that it's out in fine bookstores all around the city as well as available online. But what I thought I would do in this week's Money Minute is just go through a brief overview of the three main sections that we've broken the book down into, as well as cover a couple of bonus sections that are at the back of the book. We've basically broken the book into three different rules. Safety comes first, reasonable returns, and keeping it simple. In the safety first rule, we cover why it is so important for those that are retired or soon to be retired to make sure that they're not taking too much risk with their money. We give you some historical perspective as far as what's happened in the past with the stock market. We talk about how long it usually takes to recover from a stock market drop. And we also cover why a loss in your retirement portfolio will hurt you a lot more than a gain will actually help you. The second rule, is we show you ways to get a reasonable rate of return with your money. If you're taking less risk and you have a safer approach to your retirement planning, you still need to get a reasonable rate of return, a return that will keep up with and hopefully outpace inflation. And we'll cover with you some investments that will help you accomplish that, as well as some investments to make sure that you avoid with your retirement portfolio, because historically speaking, the returns just aren't reasonable and just aren't high enough. In the third role, we talk about why you want to keep your retirement planning simple. We take a look at what previous generations used to do when it comes to their retirements, things that we can learn from looking at what individuals used to do in the past, and we talk about why some things are so complicated today and how you can avoid that. We finish the book up with two very special bonus sections. Number one are questions that you need to ask your current financial advisor or maybe a financial advisor that you're interviewing. You want to make sure that as you move closer and into retirement, you're actually working with an expert. And we cover six very important questions that you want to ask anybody that you're going to for advice. And then the last section is a 20 point checklist. Now that you've done everything that you need to do and you're getting ready to actually move into retirement, it's an exciting time, but it can also be a little scary. So that's why we've given you 20 ideas of things that you want to do before your last day at work. So if you have any questions about the book, please visit our website. And that's this week's Money Minute. Come see Matt live and discover what millions of safety conscious Americans are doing now to protect and preserve their assets and make up for market losses. Will recent legislation changes affect your retirement? Can you safeguard your assets from unnecessary taxation? Can you find growth and security without risk in today's volatile market? Due to overwhelming demand for these events and very limited seating, we recommend that you call today, 855-MATT-DICKEN. That's 855-MATT-DICKEN, or go to askmattdicken.com. It's time once again for our Facebook poll. And while you're answering our Facebook poll question, don't forget, if you haven't already, be sure to join our social media community. You can find us on both Facebook and Twitter. If you join us, then you'll be sent articles of information that you can use for your retirement planning, as well as interesting information about the economy and updates on things happening in the office. Be sure to stick around because after the break in X's and O's, I'm going to cover with you four tips you're going to make sure that you don't want to forget. So you might want to grab a pen and paper. If you're tired of the failed buy and hope approach and are looking for a fresh take on protecting your financial future, then look no further. Declare your independence from uncertainty 
and put yourself back in control with Matt's book. Rob Russell, author, Retirement Held Hostage, and U.S. News & World Report, Smarter Investor Columnist. Come see Matt live and discover what millions of safety-conscious Americans are doing now to protect and preserve their assets and make up for market losses. Will recent legislation changes affect your retirement? Can you safeguard your assets from unnecessary taxation? Can you find growth and security without risk in today's volatile market? Due to overwhelming demand for these events and very limited seating, we recommend that you call today, 855-MATT-DICKEN. That's 855-MATT-DICKEN, or go to askmattdicken.com. You're watching Strategic Wealth with Matt Dickin. It's Smart Money Television. All right, this week I want to share with you four different tips that you'll find in our new book, Retirement Planning in a New Direction. These are four tips that you can really use as you move closer and into retirement. The first rule in the book is safety first. Individuals that are close or moving into retirement need to take less risk with their money. And the reason why that is, we take a look at tip number one, Retirement planning is really kind of broken down into two different phases. You have what's called an accumulation phase, and then you have what's called a distribution phase. Now, while you're working and you're contributing to your employer retirement plans or maybe investments on your own, that's what you would label, obviously, the accumulation side of your retirement plans. And that's where you can take as much risk maybe as you're comfortable with. Uh, you're trying to get good returns. You don't need the money for many, many years to come and you're trying to grow your nest egg to be as large as you can possibly get it. After we've accumulated the money and we've moved into retirement, now you go through what's called a distribution phase. And that's where you start to take part of your nest egg and now you're using that money to live on. Maybe you combine it with pension income or social security income. We'll talk about that in just a second. But now you have a completely different set of uh, priorities for your nest egg. So what ends up becoming crucial is that somewhere right around this time, maybe within five to 10 years uh, before retirement, certainly as you move into retirement and start taking money out of your account, safety has to become much more important than what it was as you were accumulating your assets. One of the biggest problems that I see is individuals will move into retirement, they're trying to use the same strategies and the same investments that they were using you know, when they had 15 or 20 or 30 years to go and they haven't yet shifted their strategy into more of a distribution phase mindset. That's a big, big mistake that a lot of retirees will make. The second subject that I wanted to talk with you about is really the reason why this is so critically important over here on the, on the first uh, idea that I just covered with you. It used to be that when we took a look at retirement planning, it was kind of like a, a three-legged stool. So again, those that know me know that I'm not an artist, so bear with me here. Uh, but if we take a look at this as kind of being like a three-legged stool, it used to be in years past, individuals had Social Security uh, as where part of their income came from once they retired. They usually had pension income. You know, it used to be in previous generations, uh, you would go to work for the same company for maybe 20 or 30 years, maybe longer, and when you retired, you'd have some sort of pension income. And then you would have your own investments. Uh, this would make up the third leg of the stool. So it used to be that individuals had kind of a third, a third, and a third coming from these three different areas. Well, a lot of people today, especially if you're younger and you have many years to go before retirement, they're concerned that there's not going to be much Social Security there for them, if any at all. I think those that are older, maybe within a few years of being 60 years old or older, uh, you can count on it. It'll probably be there in the, in the form that it's been promised. But if you're younger than that, it's probably best not to count on it. Uh, and if it's there, then that'll just be extra. Uh, pensions, for the most part, you're still seeing this sum um, in the uh, government sector, but in the private sector, for the most part, they've been phased out, certainly been reduced. They're not as lucrative as they used to be. So this isn't as strong of a leg uh, anymore. And then the third leg, of course, are your own individual investments. And this is really where the majority of individuals' incomes are now having to come from. So it makes what we talked about earlier, having a different strategy as you move from accumulation to distribution that much more important. It used to be if you didn't get this third leg correct, well, that was okay because maybe you had a good pension to fall back on or certainly Social Security was there uh, giving you a lot of monthly income. But as we move forward in future generations, these two things are going to kind of be a little iffy for you. These two strategies may or may not be there. So it makes this third leg that much more important. That's why you have to, once again, 
as you move closer and into retirement, you have to shift your strategies. You can't use the same things that you were using maybe 20 and 30 years ago. Matt Dickin provides retirees and those soon to be retired in his new release, Retirement Planning in a New Direction, a very specific, well-designed and thorough plan on to not only survive in these challenging times, but a way to actually thrive. I highly recommend and encourage you to be proactive and to read this extremely important and ideally timed guide to personal finance and retirement planning. Matt Zagula, author of Invasion of the Money Snatchers, a practical guide to protecting your stuff from creditors, predators, and a government gone wild. Come see Matt live and discover what millions of safety conscious Americans are doing now to protect and preserve their assets and make up for market losses. Will recent legislation changes affect your retirement? Can you safeguard your assets from unnecessary taxation? Can you find growth and security without risk in today's volatile market? Due to overwhelming demand for these events and very limited seating, we recommend that you call today, 855-MATT-DICKEN. That's 855-MATT-DICKEN, or go to askmattdicken.com. You're watching Strategic Wealth with Matt Dicken. It's Smart Money Television. On a recent radio show, we covered rule number three from my book, Ways to Keep Things Simple with Your Retirement Planning. I wanted to share that information with you here today. All right, Kentuckiana, welcome back to the show right now. Matt, we're taking on a topic that uh, I know that the polls have been done, and the stat is 97% of Americans, this is their single biggest concern when it comes to their finances, and that's what? Losing money. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, what? Uh, we get more emails in here about what can I do to be safe? How do I keep everything safe? In this crazy market that's happening right now, you know, I throw it over to you. What can people do today? To be safe. Well, let's first talk a little bit about why it's so important to be safe with your money, especially as you move closer and into retirement. You know, we mention all the time that you get one shot at getting your retirement planning done right. There's no reset button. There's no do-over. So it's incredibly important that you do not invest your money is really once you're within about 10 years of retiring in things that are overly aggressive or in things that if they were to go down in value – You'd maybe have to delay your retirement, or even worse, possibly have to go back to work. Go back to work once you've fully retired. So, safety and security kind of has to become key and has to be uh, paramount. Uh, you don't have the time to make up for market drops like you may have had uh, when you were back in your twenties, thirties, even in your forties. Once you get into your fifties, sixties, certainly into your seventies. You know, you just don't have the time to make up for significant market drops like we've seen in the past, and we will certainly be seeing again in the future. You know, Matt, so many of these emails come in, and they're essentially saying, I can't sleep at night. They're so concerned, and they may not be getting the type of advice from their advisor that will allow them to sleep at night. They're getting the same old Sit it out. It's going to change. Things will get better. I mean, what do you say to that? Yeah, well, you have to have a shift in your strategy. As you move closer and into retirement, safety with your money needs to become more of a priority. You know, a lot of our clients that we work with will tell me, they'll say, Matt, I'm not as concerned about the return on my money as I am about the return of my money. <laughs> right, you know, right, I just don't right. want to lose anything that I have. So there are still safer types of investments that you can invest uh, in today that will give you a reasonable rate of return. And we define reasonable to mean that you really need to have returns of somewhere between, say, 6 and maybe 10%. That will allow someone to take a withdrawal from their account while they're retired and still leave some money back in the account to keep up and counteract inflation, which over a 10 or 15 or 20 year retirement will have a dramatic impact. So if you never lose any money in the first place, it's easier to get a reasonable rate of return because we've talked about it here on the show in the past. When, when you lose money, it's very difficult to get ahead and stay ahead. If you have an account that goes down in value by 50% in one year, and up 50% the next year, you're not back to even. You are not back to even. You need a 100% return to recover from that type of drop. And that takes a long time. You know, on average, when we lose money in the stock market, it takes on average seven years to fully get back to even. And what ends up happening is, is you lose all of that time. 
you know, uh, you have inflation, you have taxes, you have fees that can, can kind of compound and make the problem even worse. So if you never lose money, then you don't have to take the risk that's necessary to dig your way out of a hole because you never lost anything. You're not trying to get back to even, taking a lot of risk trying to make up for lost time. Uh, if you never lost it in the first place, it's much easier to have a successful retirement. Matt, I see it when you do your seminars. You, you say exactly that. Mm-hmm. And I see those people in the audience and they're skeptical. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, no, my CD only gives me 1%. That's the only thing out there that is guaranteed and safe. And it's not. There are alternatives. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are certainly different alternatives that are out there. We, as a firm, specialize in safer money options. So sometimes individuals will say, well, Matt, why hasn't my, adv- my advisor brought up these ideas to me? And it might just be that they don't know anything about them or they don't know a lot about them because they're not safer money focused. You know, they're more of a risk-based type of advisor. And that can be appropriate for someone that's younger or someone that wants to be aggressive with their money. But as you get closer and into retirement, you need to find ways to take less risk, uh, but still see it grow at a reasonable rate. And that's where we specialize, and that's where we come in and can provide advice. So it could be possibly different preferred stocks or different ETFs, maybe CDs in a higher interest rate environment than what we're in right now. Uh, It could be different types of bonds or uh, fixed or index annuities. You know, we do a lot of work in our office with index annuities, and they have income riders that are available today that for a small fee and for agreeing to a certain amount of time before you take all of your money out of the account, you can guarantee yourself maybe four, five, six, in some cases as much as 8% guaranteed interest in a safe environment. And like I said earlier, when you never lose money, Mark, it's a lot easier to get ahead and stay ahead. Basically, what I have is a chart. We could provide this chart to anybody that would like to request it. But we went back and we took a look at the stock market over the last 20 years. And we showed with the volatility and maybe someone paying some fees along the way, if they started out 20 years ago with $100,000, at the end of last year, they would probably have about 204000 So, you know, not, not bad. You know, they more than doubled their money. It took 20 years, so mm-hmm. that's kind of mm-hmm. a long time. But they more than doubled their money. But what if they had never lost, lost any money in the first place? You know, if you go back and you can eliminate the negatives, maybe – limit what the growth could be on on the good years, which is kind of how an index annuity works, then the same person starting 20 years ago with a $100,000 investment could potentially have over $600,000 today had they never lost any money. So that's the power of never losing money. We usually advocate in our office for kind of the, the, the tortoise and the hare analogy. You know, it, it, it's getting there with consistency is what will win the race, not these wild gyrations like we've seen in the stock market over the last 20 you years. You know, you bring two things to mind, again, that we uh, we hear about all the time. And one is, you know, what is safety? But I think the more important one is you have a lot of people that feel that they're safe because I have 20% of my money in a safer option. And there is something called the rule of 100, Matt. You talk about it all the time. As a good rule of thumb, especially if you are close to retirement or somewhat into retirement, uh, why don't you tell our listeners about that? Yeah, well, a lot of times we'll see individuals are doing the exact opposite of what they should be when it comes to safety in their money. What the rule of 100 says is basically whatever your age is, that's the percentage of your retirement assets that you should have in a safe place, meaning you can't lose any money on it. And then the difference between your age and the number 100 is how much you could potentially put at risk. So if somebody is 60 years old, then that means that 60% of their retirement assets should be completely safe where they won't lose anything. And if they're comfortable with it, they could take risk with the other 40%. Completely uh, safe. Completely safe. Talk about completely not- safe for a moment. Because well, I think, and you've told me this, you, you've had people, you had appointments coming in to see you at your firm who feel that they're in a completely safe environment. And Mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is, Matt, they're not. Right. Yeah. It's uh, completely safe means you can't lose any money at all, period. Uh, We see individuals that will say, well, my money is safe because I've got a diversified mutual fund portfolio. And as we've seen in the past, you know, September 11th, 2008, just because you've got a diversified mutual fund portfolio doesn't necessarily mean that your money is going to be safe. Now, because you're diversified, you might not lose as much as you would had if you just put all your eggs in one basket, but it certainly doesn't guarantee safety. So what you need to do is have some sort of an investment. It should be, you know, you should adhere to the rule of 100. You need to have some sort of an investment that has a guaranteed safety net, some sort of guaranteed mechanism that will prevent it from going down in value. And there's different strategies and different ways of accomplishing that. 
All right, folks, stick around. We got a lot of great stuff to come today. You're listening to The Matt Dickens Show, where safe money is smart money. Come see Matt live and discover what millions of safety-conscious Americans are doing now to protect and preserve their assets and make up for market losses. Will recent legislation changes affect your retirement? Can you safeguard your assets from unnecessary taxation? Can you find growth and security without risk in today's volatile market? Due to overwhelming demand for these events and very limited seating, we recommend that you call today, 855-MATT-DICKEN. That's 855-MATT-DICKEN, or go to askmattdicken.com. And now it's time for askmattdicken.com, where I answer all the questions that you've submitted to us through our website. Mark, what kind of questions do we have this week? Matt, our first question is from Steve in Louisville, and he writes, Man, I loved reading about your parents in your new book, Retirement Planning in a New Direction. It sounds like they helped you make the decision to start your business. Did they help you build your practice, Strategic Wealth Designers? Uh, well, thanks for the question, Steve. I, actually, they did. Uh, both my parents were very involved in, in the company. My, my mom worked there. My dad worked there. When we first got started, it, it was very much a family organization. Uh, my wife was part of the business as well for, for a certain period of time. So both my parents had an incredible influence on myself. My dad told, my, uh, told me many, many years ago that uh, go into business for yourself if you can. And uh, after spending five and a half years with a, a large financial firm, uh, I went out on my own and started my own company, and, and my dad had helped a lot of different companies get off the ground, so at that time, he came in and helped me build mine as well. So right from the very beginning, they were very active. They're, they're, they're not as involved today because both of them are pretty much retired, or my dad, I don't think, will ever retire completely. He would be probably considered semi-retired, but uh, still involved in it somewhat today, but they were definitely there in the beginning and helped us lay a, a great foundation. Matt, our next question is from Ann in Lexington, and she writes, Matt, in Rule 2, Chapter 1, you talk about getting a reasonable return, but also being cautious about fees. How do I know if the fees I'm being charged are too much? Well, that's a great question, and uh, a lot of times it's difficult to find out exactly what your fees and expenses are. Sometimes they show up directly on your statement. A lot of times that's just part of the cost, though. you got to be careful. Uh, sometimes there's some hidden fees and expenses being deducted automatically from your account. So what you want to do is, first step is you could certainly ask your advisor, uh, he or she may or may not be aware of all the different fees. Uh, you could try and do research on your own, uh, maybe by reading a contract that you might have with your investments or reading a prospectus, uh, depending on uh, if you have mutual funds or not. Or probably the easiest thing to do is just come see, see someone like myself in our office. We put together something that's called a strategic wealth report where you don't have to take the time or do the research to try and figure out what you're paying in fees and expenses. That's something that we can do for you. Uh, we've run thousands of reports over the years for individuals in the community where we put basically on one page exactly what your fees and expenses are that you're paying. We put them in a percentage amount. We put them in a dollar amount. Anytime that you add all of your fees up, you want to make sure that you're paying no more than 2%, ho hopefully a lot lower than that. But you want to kind of be all in all fees considered for less than 2% uh, per year. Uh, so if you're not sure how much you're paying and you'd like to know, then we've got a resource. Just contact us in the office. We'd be happy to help you with that. Matt, our next question is from Mason in Floyd's Knobs, and he writes, I really love how your book breaks down concepts so we non-professional investors can understand them. I really like the don't following the herd chapter. I can imagine many folks fall into that situation where they are following certain trends and are following what their advisor tells them to do. What do you think is the biggest mistake people make when choosing how to invest their money? Well, thanks for the question, uh, Mason, and, and thanks for, for reading the book. Uh, biggest mistake? I don't, I don't know. It's probably different and depends on each individual's uh, situation. I think probably if I had to narrow it down to one thing that I see most often when I meet with individuals in my office, uh, is probably individuals taking too much risk when their money, with their money when they move closer and in, into retirement. It, it seems as if individuals are kind of following the same strategy that they followed when they were working. And as you transition from your working years into your retirement years, you can't use the same strategy. Uh, you can't afford to lose, to lose large sums of money uh, and, and you need to take less risk. So that's probably the biggest mistake that, uh, that we see, but of course not the only mistake. Other mistakes might be uh, paying too much in fees and expenses, uh, maybe not growing your money or having your money uh, in a tax-deferred or tax-free account when available. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that we'll see, but most often it's probably individuals just carrying too much risk 
Uh, the good news with that is there is certainly an easy fix. That's something that can be fixed pretty easily. Uh, but you need to meet with somebody and, and find out if right now if you're carrying too much risk or not. Matt, our next question is from Larry McCrum in Louisville, and he writes, Are you a fee-for-service advisor or commission compensated for products sold? You know, Larry, that's a good question. Uh, you'll see from time to time individuals will talk about or, or suggest that you don't work with financial advisors that work on a commission basis. And really why they're saying that is because the commissions might motivate them to recommend investments or strategies that aren't necessarily appropriate for you just because they're trying to generate additional revenue for themselves. And I understand that thinking, but whether you're paying somebody a fee or you're paying somebody a commission, you know, you need to make sure that they have your best interest at heart either way. So the way that we've structured our practice is sometimes it makes sense for someone to pay us a commission and not have any fees moving forward. In other situations, sometimes there shouldn't be a commission and they should pay us a fee moving forward. So we've really structured our firm where it's up to the client. Uh, we'll work together to come up with a strategy that's going to work best for them and their situation. Sometimes that means they're paying us a fee. Uh, a lot of times we can do it without any annual fees and in that situation we're earning a commission. And what you have to understand is a lot of times the commissions aren't necessarily coming out of the individual's investments. It's coming from the company that's wor that we're working with. So what a lot of companies will do is they'll set aside part of their profits through their marketing budget to pay firms like mine. Uh, so just because you're paying somebody a commission doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing anything wrong. And just because you're paying somebody a fee doesn't necessarily mean that they'll have your best interest at heart. You need to just make sure, regardless of how you're paying your advisor, that you feel like you can trust them, you feel like they're looking out for your best interest, and then from there you can discuss what the fee structure or the commission structure is going to look like. Well, Mark, any more questions this week? Matt, that's the last one of the day. Well, thanks once again for those questions. As you can tell, we always enjoy answering them. We'll see you back here again next week, same time, same place. And don't forget that retirement planning is a journey, not a destination. We'll see you next week. Come see Matt live and discover what millions of safety conscious Americans are doing now to protect and preserve their assets and make up for market losses. Will recent legislation changes affect your retirement? Can you safeguard your assets from unnecessary taxation? Can you find growth and security without risk in today's volatile market? Due to overwhelming demand for these events and very limited seating, we recommend that you call today, 855-MATT-DICKON. That's 855-MATT-DICKON or go to askmattdicken.com.